<laughs> hey, what's going on, people? I'm the new Matthew. <laughs> no, I'm just joking, you guys. Just joking, just joking. Matthew, he'll be back in just a second. Uh, my name is Sam, part of Team JVS. I'm one of the editors there. I am here co-hosting this Batman, the Batman spoiler talk. This is probably like my fifth discussion that I've had about this. We had a whole rant last night for about four hours just talking about the Batman. We want you guys to be involved. Make sure in the chat, let us know what you thought about the Batman. This is going to be a fully spoiler-filled discussion. So we're going to go for about roughly an hour or less, depending on permitting time and and working all those things. But we want you guys to be involved in the chat. We'll be consistently watching what's going on with that. But me and Matt, uh, we have not had a full in-depth conversation about the Batman. So I'm very excited to have him uh, hosting this and talking about this. I'm just happy, honestly, to be here. Uh, I'm going to go into the chat real quick, see what any of you guys are talking about, if anybody's even there. I don't think any of you guys are there necessarily yet. But um, yeah, so the Batman. Um, I think that the last Nolan film which was The Dark Knight Rises, came out 2012. So it's been exactly about 10 years since a good, you know, just solo Batman run. And, of course, we're going to get The Flash. It's going to bring back Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck Batman. Later last year, we had Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is epic in its own right, giving more service to Ben Affleck's Batman. But, you know, as far as, like, solo Batman films, we haven't had one in a very long time. And this is something unlike what we've had in quite some time. And so that's why it kind of begs the question, what about this film made it special? What about this film kind of set it apart? And I think that me and Matt are going to kind of break down that dynamic in a big way. Uh, let's see who we got here. Uh, who is that? Wonder Bat. I think we're getting to the Court of Owls or Hush for the sequel. So yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, Full disclaimer, if any of you guys don't know, this is a full spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the Batman, make sure you take this. Make sure you subscribe to Matt. Make sure you've got the post notifications on. And just come back to this video, watch later, and don't spoil yourself. <laughs> it's not worth spoiling. But yeah, uh, Mr. I, think, I can't see. Lord knows. Yeah, I think that the Court of Owls or Hush would be a very, specifically the Court of Owls, based on how grounded this is, I think that that's something that should be and could be explored as much as I would love with Mr. Freeze. But he is here, the man of the hour. I am back. <laughs> I am back. Sam, I appreciate you. Thank you for uh, introducing yourself and keeping everybody entertained for a little bit. Sorry, guys. This is like a really quick uh, impromptu live stream. So uh, things weren't really planned too much ahead of time, but that's okay. Um, but as Sam mentioned, we were talking about the Batman in this live stream. For those who are watching on the replay, I appreciate you. For stopping by, and as you mentioned, watch watch the movie, man. Do yourself a favor, find the biggest IMAX screen that you can, and if you can afford to, go ahead and watch the movie. Um, if not, watch it anyway, where anywhere you can, and definitely come back and uh, because you don't want this is a movie I think you don't want to get spoiled. There's a lot of no. juicy uh content in this in this film, so um, which we will be talking about. So yes, thank you guys, uh, M Wamba, thank you for being here. And those again, those who are watching this on replay, I appreciate you guys. Um, all right. I think we should just get right into this thing. I heard you mentioning Court of, Court of Owls uh, and where this can go next. They're definitely setting up the Rogues Gallery, um, especially with Joker towards the end. Um, but I want to I want to hear your take on this film. I know we talked about it privately, but. What's your overall thoughts on the Batman? So the Batman, uh, it had it had a lot of things going against it for me. Um, I, if it wasn't for the very first trailer that kind of set it apart, I kind of was really, I was like, you know, Matt Reeves is a phenomenal director. Like I, he's got a lot of promise, but he doesn't have a lot of big films underneath his belt. Like I love. You know, let me in. I really appreciated Cloverfield. I love what he did with the Planet of the Apes, War for the Planet of the Apes specifically. So I knew he had a he had a good pull with it, but it was a lot of dissension, you know, because everybody was saying that Ben Affleck's script for his presumed Deathstroke, Batman, Assault on Arkham, like everybody was so pressed for it. 
And not only did he not get to direct that, but he got pushed out as the Batman in this film. Like Matt Reeves took three years and developed this. And it was a scheme pushed and pushed and pushed. And I was worried about, you know, what happened with, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Josh Whedon with the whole Batgirl thing. And he fluffed that for two years and then never came to fruition. So when we saw that first trailer, I was like, oh, man, this could be epic. But I was like, Rob Pattinson was like, I ain't worked out. I ain't done this. And I was just like, I just want to see a psychologically imbalanced Batman. I want to see a fully immersive Batman experience in Gotham and in the characters. And I want a great story, right? And this movie gave it everything. Every single thing that I wanted, it gave it to me in space. Not only was Gotham its own creature, right? It was its own like progressive expansion because by the beginning of the movie, you're like, okay, this is a corrupt Gotham. It's pretty messed Mm. up. But by the end of it, like, <laughs> it went on a biblical proportion. Like, everything got swept away with the flood to the point <laughs> now that everything is, like, in disarray. But yeah. then you have characters that weren't even their fully realized versions. Like, even Matt, Rob Patterson's Batman was not his fully realized self because he was just about vengeance. He was on this suicide mission, technically. He didn't care what would happen to him. But by the end of this film, he gets to the understanding that not only he has to step up, but he has to be a beacon of hope. And he actually showed him being a beacon of hope, as well as every single character was on the same playing field. He wasn't the second tier. Batman wasn't the second tier in the very first time. Any of these Batman movies, Batman wasn't the second tier. He was on equal playing field with everybody. And that was one of the reasons why this, to me, dare I say, is the best Batman narrative we have ever gotten live action. I didn't say best Batman film. I said the best Batman narrative we've ever got, or maybe we ever will get, because after this, we'll see where it goes. But no, bar bar none, this is the best Batman story, Batman-centric story on live action we've ever gotten. That's just a little bit of what I feel. So, I mean, I agree with everything you're saying. I, uh, so... (laughs) When I saw the movie, what was it, two weeks ago now? Um, And I left the theater. The amount of emotions and thoughts that were running through my head and literally nobody but like a few other people in that that theater saw the movie. The amount of things I wanted to say, the excitement that I had with uh, seeing the things that we know Batman to be especially like from you know the batman the animated series if you guys watch the batman animated series or mm-hmm. just even from old old school detective comics like there was a lot of things in there that i was like man i want to talk about it and then when i called you like you can hear the excitement in my voice and i'm like trying to like stay calm and like not spoil anything um you know best way i could but I, i'm gonna say it i mean as of right now because my opinion changes a lot um as of right now, I'm going to say this is the best Batman film. Now, the best Batman film, right? Um, There's not, not to say that the work that Nolan did in his trilogy is nothing. Like, that's right. not what I'm saying at all. Because those right. movies are are great films in, a, in of itself. Mm-hmm. They're great movies, period. Put Batman aside, they're great movies. Right. And cinematography in that, in that, in The Dark Knight alone is like <laughs> amazing, beautiful beautiful right so that's not to say to negate any of that stuff but as far as a batman film is concerned um the one thing that was missing for me from every iteration of batman that i've seen so far and i know you're a huge fan of of batman 89 and that uh and um keaton as batman i know you're a huge fan of that um the one thing that i was missing was what made batman special at his core which i believe was his ability to be to be a great detective and his ability and we've only really ever seen that in animation you know apart from comic books right like we've seen it in the justice league uh, um unlimited like we've seen this in the dc movies that came out like the uh what's it called uh killing joke we've seen it in in year one like we've seen it in all pretty much all the batman solo films right like the animated film so this is the first time we're seeing batman represented at its core to be exactly what he really is. People keep forgetting this guy is a detective. Right. And they and they remind you of that in this movie several times. Mm-hmm. That this is a film noir style Batman detective driven film. And 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 even fighting wise, 
he still had it. He was still killing it fighting wise. <laughs> so this like, is a year two Batman. It's not like this is a vet. This is he when he was approaching fight scenes. I mean, the very opening shot. I know we're gonna get there. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the the point of how he was narrating it, right? And he was talking about how he has to be oh, everywhere in the eyes of the villains, right? Yep. Or yep. the people, or the criminals. And they're all consistently looking to the shadows. That's my favorite line. Oh, and, my God. And so when he actually walks out, right? And, and I thought it was going to be, I was like, dang, that would that's, that moment's already been spoiled for me. You know, we're going to see it. But it's different. <laughs> because you hear him coming as opposed to just seeing him. So the atmospherics are like, oh, he's, he's walking out of literal darkness. Can we and, talk about the Kino's uh, musical presence during all that too, oh, by the way? <laughs> man, look. So, man, you know, mess me up. Hold on. I gotta, you, gotta, you gotta keep it target. So, <laughs> the thing about that, though, is Batman's presence alone incites fear. But because this is such a young Batman, he's not dodging out of a way of bullets. Nah. He's just taking them head on. Like, even if you look at, like, the Batman, you know, the original Batman animated series, like, he would, like, duck and dodge mm-hmm. and move out of the way of bullets and try to use his gadgets. He don't man care was, about gadgets. Man was eating bullets. He didn't care about his <laughs> life. Like, he he was literal, like, the embodiment of built-up rage. He just wasn't yelling all the time. Like, he was just quiet and awkward and just vengeful. Like, the entire movie. Up until uh, one of the most iconic moments in this film, which is when, you know, he cut the cord, Mm -hmm. cut the cable, the key from everybody get electrocuted. And then he literally, like the fuse, to walk people out of the darkness. And this is the thing about this film. He lives in the darkness. Like He literally lives in the darkness this entire movie. But he knew that they had to be led out of there. And they had to be able to trust him. It had to be a symbiotic relationship with that. And I was like, we've never seen that either. Because even after that, like in day in present day, like in the daytime, like he was helping people out. And this woman, like, she didn't want to let go of his hands. She's like, mm-hmm. nah, homie. Like, no, I, I ain't going nowhere. Can, I trust them, you know? And we've never seen that, bro. Never seen that live action ever. And and the whole the whole thing about that too is it's like we're seeing him truly become a hero. Right. Right. Like, like, especially cutting him cutting the cable. It's like you know he was like free it like if I get electrocuted well I I saved some people right like boom cuts it and then as you said like I mean come on I mean Greg Greg Fraser is like a god to me okay cinematography man like this guy I become I became a huge fan of him since since Rogue One so the way that he can capture things visually. Is a whole different conversation. I can literally spend a whole uh, stream talking about um, Greg Fraser as as the DP. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was this uh, this journey to him becoming a hero, and to him accepting that, and to him getting rid of the whole like, okay, I'm more than just vengeance. I'm more than just hate. Um, I can be more for for Gotham. And that was a, I mean, in the beginning, uh, the line that we mentioned, man, it was like, uh, um, <laughs> he's like, they, they think, they think I had in the shadows. I am the shadows. Right. And then that line alone told me how good the writing was going to be for the rest of the movie as well, just because of that and the way how they built it up. Um, and as you said, everyone's just looking so like into this man almost got ran over because he's just staring at this darkness in the corner of Gotham. Right. So it, it, I mean, there's just so, I mean, like, I don't even know where to, where to begin to really go off because this is so, so many moments from this film that, that really shook me. And I don't know. Okay. Tell me this. I don't know if I'm just dumb or I just took like, I'll take a while to get this, but the uh, Rada a lot of scene, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me. Okay. It was my wife that pointed pointed this out to me last night, and I did. I, I, I've seen it three times, and I did not realize <laughs> that the that the penguin said, "You are El Rata Alada." Because when right. he went to the website, I was like, "What the hell prompted this dude to just type Rata Alada <laughs> I'm like, and then she was talking to me, and I was like, 
URL. Right. And I'm right. like, I'm I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Because like apparently everybody got this but me. So <laughs> After three watches, so so when I was watching the film, I was kind of like, "Wow!" I think the thing about it that set it off, it did. When I was watching the very first time, I didn't catch it. I didn't catch it at all. But the fact that the penguin, and this is the thing, so because we're gonna, I guess we're gonna talk about characters eventually. The penguin, not only does Colin Farrell oh. literally immerse himself into the character, he disappears as Colin Farrell. Yeah. But the thing about his psychology in this is so different than DeVito or even Robert Taylor Lord in the Gotham mm-hmm. is that he's very mysterious. Mm-hmm. Like he's like legit. He could be a character off the Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is because he's about his business. He's not afraid of Batman at all. Normally most of these villains are afraid of Batman. He's not. Man's like, matter of fact, man's making jokes with him. He's sitting there <laughs> making jokes off of him, right? <laughs> After he had already flipped him in a car multiple times. Like, I think during the chase, like, and that's one of the things I, I, I've only seen the movie once, but I, I, the fact that I can recall all this is insane to me. When he was in the chase and he was sitting there, like, oh, you're, you're oh, he's crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. He was enjoying the pursuit. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's so crazy because even down to the point when, you know, the Falcone situation happened. And he stood up for himself like, nah, bro, you ain't gonna, uh, shoot, you ain't gonna let me do this. You better talk to me like that. <laughs> and it's, it's just crazy because there's so much to build him to the Penguin that we know. But the other side of that is the fact that he is a, not afraid of a man that is walking around taking bullets, taking gunfire, taking explosives to the face. Mm-hmm. he's not afraid of this man meaning that psychologically you can tell like how somebody like him as systematic and structured as he is can end up in something like arkham because he's off as well and that's the thing every single character in this psychologically has got things of darkness that sway them left right down to selena mm-hmm. selena in this she's the best man. version of catwoman yes. that we've had on a comic book level we've never had a live action true to form catwoman and it goes to giving her an actual story yes because the thing about this with the falcone the attachment with the falcone i've always been like even to the animated series i was kind of like you know what catwoman can go left or right like she she's a thief you know what i'm saying like she yeah. ain't really bad but when you think about the substance of where she comes from right her mom was strangled by falcone her best friend was strangled by falcone her mm-hmm. dad literally had her down like this like why are you making me do this right my own right. flesh and blood mm-hmm. and i'm like this could easily be her reality as well. After she you could, dropped the hit could, on her too. <laughs> right, she, she could own Crazy. this darkness, right? Yeah. And we've never had it thought about like this, that Catwoman could be or could go down this route as well. Like we always knew that she didn't care about killing people, but it's like, why? Mm-hmm. And I think Bruce, or I'm not even gonna call him Bruce because there's no Bruce Wayne in this movie. I'll, nah. I'll, I'll go into that a little bit later. But nah. Batman said, you cannot do this because you will become this. And I'm just like, that's so real, bro. It's as a correlation to every single villain in this movie too, Batman. Down to Paul Dano. But I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Keep it going, keep it going. So, this is good. Yeah. So with, with Paul Dano's character, a lot of people are going to make comparisons with him and Heath Ledger. Nothing and no one can touch what Heath Ledger did. Keith Ledger made the Dark Knight. It is a character study on him and how he can break down the system because he's mm-hmm. a man that doesn't care about putting things on fire, right? Mm-hmm. But this <laughs> version of the Riddler is a serial killer. <laughs> like, he he makes this movie turn from being a noir to mm-hmm. a noir superhero thriller. Yes. I don't think we've ever had a superhero noir thriller before. In, in all honesty, it's not for everybody. No, it's not. Because the way that his psychology went was like, no, we've been do- we've been working along this whole entire time. You inspired me. Like we've been, we're brothers. You know, we're we're the same. We did this like, together. Like we've been, and like <laughs> when he was ta- when that whole scene, that whole interrogation scene. The weird thing about it is not only it was so much performance acting with mm-hmm. you. They tricked me to believing, is it possible that this version of Batman might be psychologically off? Because it's, it was stated his mom was. 
Mm-hmm. So maybe he don't. Maybe he doesn't recall having conversations with this man. Yeah. I, I, I legit thought about it, but then it clicked for him and it clicked for the audience that, oh, no, this is in this man's mind. Yeah. He's sick, sick. Not only is he a killer, but he feels as though he's justified everything he's doing. Yeah. And he has help. From yeah, his followers. is Yep, yep. Dude, like, he... He's unlike any villain we've ever had on a comic book level because he is a true to form serial killer. Like yeah. he is a true to form Zodiac Seven, whatever you want to recall it. And I think Paul Dano crushed it. Man, Paul, this is probably one of his best. Man, honestly, if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm, if I'm being honest. Um, also, I didn't even realize how tall Paul Dano was. Actually, this guy is actually pretty tall. He's about the same, a little bit taller than Robert Pattinson. If I'm if I'm not yeah, mistaken. If, he's yeah, pretty tall, not- he's pretty tall dude. Yeah, if they're not the same height, he's a little bit. He edges them out just a little bit. Yeah, like on the red carpet, they were uh, they were standing next to each other. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't realize he was this tall. <laughs> I thought he was like this this scrawny, small, small dude, but no. Um, my my concern going into this movie, concerning you know with you know especially with the Redler, was how were they going to approach him? Because mm-hmm. there were so many. Even if you remember uh, Jim Carrey's performance as the Riddler. And you're looking at uh, also just different versions in the animated uh, shows and then, like, even in Harley Quinn, even. <laughs> like, you see this guy that you sort of can't really take seriously, right? Right. And so I'm like, okay, how are they going to really do this version of the Riddler? So when when he really stepped in, in that first sequence, when his theme started playing with the mayor and all you see is the glasses in the shadows as well. And he uses that tool on him. He's just looking at him like, okay, what's this guy gonna do? Okay. Oh, he doesn't see me yet? Oh, wow. Okay, cool. And then just hits him in the back of the head and just goes, man, that scene gave me the absolute chills. Three times, all three times. <laughs> so Paul Paul Dano and the whole, the whole execution of his character introduction um, within the film was just amazing. The way that he even outsmarted uh, Batman and made him and like, oh, you're really not as smart as I thought you were. Oh, man, I thought we were on the same level. You didn't realize this? Oh, man, you got to go back and, and, and do something because I thought we was here together. I didn't realize I gave you too much credit. So like, this is not how this is supposed, this is to, go. supposed to go. What? <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> but, so, but, but you made a really good point about that first moment. And again, I got to see the movie again in IMAX. But oh, man. the fact that that first kill and that first murder weapon was literally the first puzzle piece. Yep. Out of a series of terrible murders in a superhero film. Just think about it like that. I cannot let my son see, neither one of my sons see this movie until they're at least 14 or 16 years old. I feel that. Like, in yeah. a good conscience. Because there's consistent death. And yes, the Dark Knight, the Joker blew up a hospital. Like, he mm-hmm. he threatened people with knives. But this man put on the commissioner one of the most sick things oh. around. And I was like, if, you, if, you, if you're a kid and you're watching this, like, you're like, Nightmare wait, people fuel. think like this? Like, Nightmare fuel. The fact is that the Riddler honestly may have been better at sneaking up on people than Batman at this stage. <laughs> I mean, yeah. serious, because, yeah, Batman was in the darkness a lot, and he disappears very well, but the Riddler was always five steps ahead. He was, he was when, uh, who was it, when Skarsgård was going to his car, and he thought he was good, oh, and yeah, all of a sudden you see this man, like, stick up. That was Skarsgård, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, like, I was like, yo, this is... Okay, let, me ask, let me add something about that scene. So... This is one thing. This is one of the things I learned from my uh, from my from my uh, my people at my samurai dojo. One of the best self defense weapons to have on you is a flashlight. I carry this on me all the time. That that scene is so important for self defense in general because when you go into a car, first thing I do at night, I check inside my car. Mm. I check in the back. I check the back windows. Because people do things like that. They especially if they're stalking you, they will hide in your car mm-hmm. and they will wait for you to and, and you wouldn't even notice it because you're thinking, okay, yeah, I locked my car, it's fine. Right. No, 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 no. 
that scene was super important. Like, just as a martial artist, the way I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm watching that scene. I'm like, yo, nah, man. If he had his flashlight, that would have been over. Like, he could have seen it. He could have maybe potentially avoided it. But then he was also high on drops. So who knows? But um, the fact is that that scene, that scene was a good lesson in general for self-defense. People, please check your cars. Even if it's a phone flashlight, check your cars before you enter them because things like that can't happen. But anyways, yeah, that scene alone, man, with him sneaking in the car, <laughs> he was just looking at the back. Like, the thing is, certain things that the Riddler was doing was uh, really inexperienced in a way, but it was, like, because people are so... I wouldn't say I wouldn't say stupid. It's just that some people are they, they're blind to things. Yeah, the guards are let down. The guards yeah. are let down at all times. They're he was able to just get over them every single time. Like like how do you? Why would you like things that happen in that movie? I would not be doing, especially if I lived in Gotham. I don't care if I'm the mayor. I, you think I'm gonna? I'm I'm about to have my TV away from my front door. Not happening. I'm cl- I'm having certain lights on in the house. I need to have certain security systems set in place because people right. will sneak in your house, bro. Right. <laughs> like, so I don't know. From a, again, I'm, I'm going off track, but as a as a martial artist, my thought process watching a lot of this stuff happening, I'm like, how could these people have avoided this? <laughs> because the way that he murders these people, as you mentioned, is so gruesome. It's so sick. It's literally scary. Yeah. It is terrifying. Like the way that he does this, especially with the duct tape and the whole thing. Dude. And like, man, he was literally a terrifying villain to the core. Dude, if you really think about it, and I didn't even talk about this in my four hour freaking discussion last night. <laughs> man, if we had time, it would have been like that today. <laughs> four hours. So if you really think about it, and again, I'm just making sure people, I, I know a lot of people are making comparisons, but take a step and just think about what you just saw. The Scars guy, just take a Scars guy, for example. They bring him to, was it the mayor's memorial funeral service? That was mm-hmm. his, at, at the mm-hmm. church, right? Yep. They, he, he takes the man, makes him drive through a church, pull out a camera on his phone, and let him know, like, yeah, you're about to die if you don't, you know, tell everybody, like, what you did, you know? And on top of that, he explodes somebody's head inside of church like you think about it, like because a lot of times like you disbelieve so much because these are superhero films but the reality is he exploded a man's head right in front of batman to the point that batman jettisoned backwards yes and was all the way like i've never seen batman like literally get exploded in his face like realistically the trap metal probably would have tore him to pieces no that would have that messed him up really. but the reality of what just happened is he exploded a man's head at a funeral Yep. I don't think a lot of times people take a step back and like, yo, what did I really just watch? And there's a lot of moments like that on just raw emotional things that are happening. Sorry, real quick. I'm going to just, because I want to answer this. Way. I agree with you. He did. He did win. Oh, yeah. He was smarter he def- than Batman. He, he, smarter. Definitely, he definitely won. <laughs> but yeah, so sorry, Sam. You were saying. No, nah, I mean, that's a good point. He Not only was he five steps ahead, like this version of Batman is not smarter mm. than this version of really. And yeah, it's all, it's supposed to be like that. The Riddler always messes himself up because psychologically he's imbalanced. It's yep, not yep. his intellect. He always trips himself up because he leaves a clue because he wants to be found. He wants to be connected. And he even at this, he wanted to be connected in some way to Batman. He, he mm-hmm. wanted to be Im- implored by Batman. But um, the reason why I brought up that and just taking a step back is psychologically, if you think about the things that are going on with this version of Bruce, take like where the first time he sees the boy, Right. On the surface level of watching it, you're like, man, Batman looking real weird at this kid. Like, why is he looking <laughs> at him just staring at him, right? No, nah, he saw himself, man. But the reality is he is now reliving trauma <laughs> that he, for the first, first time in a long time, he doesn't have any control of. Mm-hmm. He's looking at literally himself and knows exactly the road this is going to take this kid down. And he can't handle it because it goes back to a line that he said. He said something along the lines of like, I recall everything that I do each night. Yeah, and so yeah, the, the, yeah. the context he has, he literally rerolls the footage. But conveniently, he walked away when it came back to the kid to the point that Alfred looked and was like, oh, man, I know Bruce is jacked up over this. Yeah, he's but, like, oh, man, come on, man, not again. <laughs> this movie psychologically dissected Batman. Foundationally, mm-hmm. even though he didn't state it, he believed that his parents were saints. And yeah. he realized that 
they weren't. Like his mother, I think I don't think they've ever really done this outside of uh, the Earth Two side of like Martha Wayne having a psychological imbalance, but they mm-hmm. went for it completely. They went there. Yep, yep, yep. And all the things that you know Thomas Wayne had to do, where he was not a bad man, he also had to compromise himself. And on top of Bruce realizing not only why he started this, but what it was doing, it shook him up so bad that he went to Falcone and like, look what happened here <laughs> and he literally looked into the face of evil he knows how evil this man is but he was mm-hmm. so shaken that he didn't have anywhere else to turn yep. and it's just crazy how they dissected batman that's never Trust happened no one anymore. and and the thing is too that uh that we, we we i mean we've talked about this and i've talked about this a lot um on my wife's uh channel because she she was what you know we were watching the the dark knight trilogy and all that the one thing that we discussed a lot was um especially with this movie was how beautifully they captured the fact that Bruce Wayne is fake. Bruce Wayne, sorry, sorry, quick. Yeah, I'm a uh, uh, hold on uh, until Sam had to step out real quick. So I got to just answer one of these questions. Um, do you think that kid that the kid could be Robin in the future? Um, I don't know, but I feel like I don't know. It's possible that they could do that. They could definitely do that, but I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I wouldn't be against it though. It would be a good way to kind of connect the two, the two together. Um, yeah. All right. So he's a little ninja. He had a ninja outfit on. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, that's that's a good that's a good point. Um, <laughs> I thought you were saying something else. He's a... <laughs> I didn't realize what you were saying until after like two seconds. Um, but you know, sense back. So that to 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 go on about what I was saying was, uh, I love how they captured the fact that Bruce Wayne is fake. Bruce yeah. Wayne is not a real person. He's right. just, he's a mask. He's a cloak. Batman is really who this guy is. And I love that, the fact that uh, in in the interrogation scene, that even uh, Riddler points this out. Like, the mask is, this is who you are. The mask brings out your true self. And uh, one of the things I love from Pattinson's performance as Bruce Wayne, because some people were saying, oh man, he wasn't giving me Billionaire Playboy vibes. I'm like billionaire Playboy Bruce Wayne is like later on in yeah, his he's life. Not there yet? He don't care about none of he that. He doesn't yet. care about that stuff, right? So like as he gets older and he's more experienced as Batman, he's starting to real. He started to realize that okay, I need to make Bruce Wayne a legitimate public figure in order for me to continue doing this. So even if I have to right. fake being this guy in public, I'll do it. Right. Michael Keaton's Batman was there. Yeah, he was already smart. there. He was already there, right? Um. I would even say Ben Affleck's Batman was there. He was way past yeah. there because his Bruce Wayne was hurt, was like really great. Yeah. Right. Christian Bale got there a little bit. They they sped up the process, but he got there eventually. Yeah. And Batman Begins, he wasn't there until uh, Alfred was like, "Man, you gotta get, you gotta get out there. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, you gotta Bruce Wayne has to has to be out there." So the point is, I loved how uncomfortable you can see how much he was when he was Bruce Wayne. Yeah. At the memorial side, he was just like hiding from the cameras, like. He was kind of like shriveled up. He felt he looked and felt small and powerless. Yeah, powerless. That's and exactly un- what I was feeling. Uncomfortable. Exactly. Right. He hated being Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He hated being in that skin. But when he was in, when he had his cowl on and he was Batman, pure confidence. Yeah. Pure confidence, strength, power, uh, Everything that you want to see, and then when he's in the bad cave, he doesn't have to pretend being because he, even with the mask off, he's still <laughs> Batman right. to an extent. So he's just there, plain face, listening to Nirvana, going yeah. scrolling through his 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 pictures all day or in his videos and going about his day. Man, I love that so much. And everyone that that said that wasn't a good representation of Bruce Wayne, I think missed the point. Yeah, of who Bruce Wayne really is, and and yeah. that there really is a difference between the two of them. It's not like yeah. With uh the Superman, Clark and and Superman, yes, they're two different people, but Clark and Superman are also pretty much the same guy, right? If you really and, think about it, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a very interesting concept, and that's one thing I wanted to touch on with this because somebody said the same thing to me last night, and this is the reality, and I said it before, this man did not care whether or not he was going to live or die, yeah. So he didn't care about a legacy. He didn't care about a face. He he didn't he didn't do anything during the daytime at all. <laughs> so 
for him, it was like it, just, it didn't matter, you know. But then through the metamorphosis of his character in this movie, by the end of the film, he understood that he had to be a, a semblance of hope. He understood he had to do that by any means necessary because now the city is completely in disarray. It's a huge power vacuum that easily Oswald can walk into. Bruce Wayne could walk into it. They don't have any literal central focus at all. And mm -hmm. so I think that when you see the next movie, it's going to be a situation where he realized, OK, I've got to put this persona on to keep the city afloat yes. in some way, shape or form, because by my own hands, I can only do but so much. And now that I actually care to make sure that this city lives and breathes outside of just my own hurt and pain. I also have to do my due diligence on the front side too. And I think that that's where we're going to get a lot of that foundations of him making it. It's just going to be weird because in this movie, even in the beginning of this movie, if you look at in this picture behind us right here, whatever it is, yeah, with their first interaction, I think honestly, he didn't know whether or not to lock her tail up or to trust her because she, he understood why she was doing what she was doing. But yeah. He also understood that She's breaking the law. And, and he, it was kind of like. Was also, let's not forget, he was also down bad. That's never going to change. Right. And, and so <laughs> the, way, bad. <laughs> the way that he was all close up to her personal boundaries at all times was telling that he, he didn't know what to do around her. You know what I mean? And eventually by the end of the movie, he was willing to die for her. Mm -mm -mm. And even the same thing with Alfred. Like he was kind of like, Alfred, you ain't my dad, you know? <laughs> but then his whole foundations got wrapped around. And, you know, when they had that conversation, and I, that's all credit to um, your boy Andy Serkis. Oh, Andy yeah, Serkis said absolutely. something that no other Alfred has ever said to me that I can recall. And he said that they were my responsibility. Like, you're my responsibility. Now, I, this wasn't you, I was supposed to protect him. Because he had said something along the lines of, like, I trained you. I tried to do this. I was like, whoa, 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 wait, hold on. You trained him? Meaning you got military experience to train this man? You, you taught him some stuff? I'm glad that they actually touched on that, too. Right. Alfred and, was, really, was really with it back in the day. So it's like he understood even then, like, how much not only did he love and need Alfred, but that this whole entire time he was really pushing him away because he really just wanted to die. Like he, he, he didn't care. Like I think that moment where the shotgun, somebody brought this up last night, the shotgun was pointed at his head. Yeah. I think that he reconciled like, okay, this is it. Like I gave him my best effort, but I'm, I'm okay with this. But the moment that, you know, he was passing out and Selena was about to die. He shot himself with that dag on, uh, Venom from Bane. Venom. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's, from that's Bane exactly Venom. what I was yeah. <laughs> He went on a rage. And like to the point that Selena and Gordon were looking like, were like hey, my man. Are you going to stop? And I, I think that's a perfect introduction to Venom. But we got to talk about Jeffrey Wright. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Wright, mm -hmm. unlike any of the other ones, I think the only one is the Batman year one where Gordon is truly Batman's first partner. Their relationship, much like Selena, was a part of this whole entire film and the process of how it was going to evolve because down to the point that the cops were surrounding him, he woke mm -hmm. up from, you know, being knocked out and Gordon had to J him up and like, yo, chill, dog. Like, what you doing yeah, right, right now? He's like, yo, oh, I'm can trying we talk to get about, you out of here. We, yeah, he's like, I'm trying to get you out of here. But like, can we talk about that line real quick? When the chief was like, I got you on assaulting an officer. He's like, you got me on assaulting three. I was like, yo, this man really does not care. He did. He did. Like, he, he does not care. He's like, no, you got me on assaulting three, homie. Like, you, you got me messed up. Like, I'm already messed up right now. Like, you, you trying to be four? Like, what's up? So, but now, nah, yeah, you were saying, yeah, man, that whole scene, he's like, man, I gotta get you out of here, man. Like, oh, great. It's, great. it's just their relationship, man. Like, it's so weird. Like, he shouldn't have a real relationship with this man, but he trusts him so openly. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just didn't seem like something that was attainable with somebody like him psychologically. But it, it, it even that relationship was something that's furthering him to something he needs to be later on, which is so fascinating to me. Um, there was a scene at the funeral sequence where a guy was talking about like, 
you know, what are you doing here, man? Like, I think I heard this guy, Bruce Wayne, is showing here. Like, he never shows his face, yada, yada, yada. That same guy later on shows up because he was a part of the Riddler's crew. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it also showed him, like, man, if I would have made a real connection with him as this Bruce guy, Wayne, yeah. that might not have happened. It might not have yeah. escalated to that point. Yep. But um, I love that. And that's why they focused. That. They they focused on that too, and that was really good. Um, one of the things besides the story that I just want to quickly talk about, um, it's only one thing that I wish we got a little bit more of in this movie. And this is what I loved about uh Keaton's Batman was we man Michael Keaton again. This is just, this is just my martial arts thing, but he was kicking people. Michael Keaton's Batman was kicking people. This is a nitpick, and there's not anything to really be like, oh, okay, like you know, something to be mad about. Um, but if if I if I saw this Batman uh kicking people, that would have made my day. But I feel like this this version of uh of Batman was more of like a boxer, right? Like detective comics, a boxer in the ring, really good with his jabs, really good with his uppercuts. You know, it's haymakers. All of that is all real good. Um, one second. Uh, but yeah, man, that that's like literally my only uh, nitpick. Sam will be Sam will be right back, guys. Um, all right, let's read. Let's read some. Let's read some. Let's read some comments here. Uh, yes, yeah. He was like, oh man, yeah. His fa- his face during that scene was like, what have I done? Like. I, I was going around telling people this, and now this guy's coming back to me and telling me that he's vengeance. I, I I've done something completely wrong, and I could have I could have handled this a little better, you know, being being there for the city. Um, I mean, maybe I'm tripping, but I thought his martial arts was really brute force and let's go. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna touch more on that. So yeah, his his uh, his martial arts did not contain any class to it. It was definitely brute. I wouldn't say it didn't have skill. I feel like it was just his style in this movie was more akin to a uh, a brawler, right? Like a street brawler, someone that really knows how to handle their hands well, someone that knows how to control their body properly. Definitely trained because the way that he was operating with his uh, his body mechanics was, was great. So I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't say that uh, that it didn't have any skill. It just wasn't as pretty. I would. I would dare to say it was more realistic. To be honest with you, because like in a real fight, you're you're not going to be able to. And again, um, this is just what I see as, as you know in my own training, right? Like you're not going to have those flashy moments where you're going to get like amazing like roundhouse kicks and like beautiful flips and like a lot of that stuff is all dramatics right but in a real fight and people coming at you you have to adapt in that situation the best way possible so i would even though he didn't have the kicks that i would prefer i I was still okay with this batman just because again he had the brawler type boxer uh vibe to him and that in itself has its own set of skills right like You can definitely tell that he was he was versatile in the street, man. Just being able to use any style of um, Pattinson's Batman, sorry, Pattinson's Batman boxer style mixed with Krav Maga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I train I train Krav for many years. Right, I do I do I do uh, classical samurai bujutsu right now. Um, I did Shotokan and Krav Maga for many years. Right, like I can tell you right now that Krav Maga style, um, definitely was there was definitely a Krav trainer. In, in the fight choreo room because he there's a lot of moves he was doing especially like a lot of his jabs and the way he, he moves his hips and a lot of his movements on a technical level fight choreography was like perfect and so realistic um because it works in the real world and it works out in the street so this is a batman i can actually see you know being put in the real world because a lot of his, his movements were real they were natural mm-hmm. right they were so natural i think one it's, it's such a small scene but it's one of my favorite scenes in the entire uh in the entire movies one of them went to was the iceberg he, uh no yeah when he went to the iceberg but it was uh but not when he was batman when he had the hood on it's so small it's a small scene but he was hiding in the storage room and the guy comes in and he punches him like that just those two <laughs> punches those two quick punches 
literally sold me extra. Like, <laughs> it was so smooth and like satisfying to watch. I remember just like on my second watch, going to watch it just to be like, okay, I need to see this scene. Like this scene is what I'm reading for. It was great. I loved it. But yeah, man, just just to add to you know to finish up what I'm, my thoughts on the fighting, it, it was definitely more grounded, more brutal. I love that he was able to adapt. And in and, and Krav Maga, they teach you how to adapt a lot to movements, right? So he was able to pick up anything. Like, he picked up the bat, like the baseball bat, beating people in the Iceberg Lounge with the baseball bat, going crazy. I mean, I love that scene when the guy was about to shoot him, and he just takes the bat and throws the bat at the guy. And... It bounces off the side of the railing and like hits him in the face. That scene was just so satisfying. Him with the bat, he's like the guy has a gun to his face. He takes the bat and throws the bat in his face. Bro, look, this is the, this is the thing I realized about. <laughs> thing I really about about this Batman. Get the job done by any means necessary. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't about no technique. It wasn't mm-hmm. about looking good. It wasn't about looking flashy. It was about how can I quickly dismantle you it didn't matter even if it was a car or if it was somebody physically in front of him and that's the thing a lot of people were like you know i, I love the dark Knight. i saw the dark Knight maybe like 20 or 30 times in the theater i Jeez. kid you not i kid that's you not. many times i've seen wonder woman <laughs> and so the only thing about the dark Knight in general is the fight <laughs> When I go back and rewatch the actual fight, and this was like only one technical fight that I can even recall, and that was when you know he was trying to get Rachel Dawes. Outside mm-hmm. that, like you kind of remember, like him kind of like roping everybody up, you know, towards the end with the help of Lucius and stuff like that. But the fight choreography in this film, mm-hmm. to me, is far superior to The Dark Knight, hands down. And the thing about that, let me preface this: I'm not saying that. The Dark Knight is better, or I'm sorry, I'm not saying The Dark Knight is worse of a film because of it, because again, it gave us one of the best performance, best world building experiences of the Batman we've seen in quite some time. But the thing about this is this is all Batman. This is raw Batman. This is a year two that doesn't have it all together, that understands on almost like a suicide mission. And he's just giving it everything he has down to the scene that I thought we were going to talk about very soon. Hopefully, we're going to talk about bring it up, the first bring it up. introduction of the Batmobile. Functionally, I had oh. been talking about the Batmobile before the movie came out. I was like, man, what the heck is this? This is this is uh, I got a lot of Fast and Furious. I got a lot to say about that. Dominic scene. Toretto was the one that kind of <laughs> bought this movie. And so, when I think the pig was trying to get away or whatever, all of a sudden you hear this roar. <laughs> Out of the darkness of an alley. Oh, and like, man. and then all of a sudden it starts to ramp, and you see nothing but the heating of the engine. Have you seen you haven't seen have you seen it in IMAX yet? No, no. Oh, no, wait no, till no, you no, do. No, no, no. no wait no, till no. you do. Because <laughs> Jarrell actually, Jarrell was telling me, because he seen he seen it in IMAX before me. So he was telling me, like, man, wait till you see this joint in IMAX. And I'm like, okay. As oh, man, dude, the sound during that scene, I was literally shivering. But yeah, dude, please continue. <laughs> dude, so the thing about it is the way that it came out, it came out like an animal. Mm. Like it, the sound made it feel like what is coming out of the darkness? But again, the criminals, they're looking in the corners in the darkness. Imagine if this wasn't Oswald. Imagine this was a normal person. <laughs> All of a sudden they're like Oh my god! <laughs> like that's you know, but Oswald just crazy enough to be like, oh, let me get that up out of here, man, crazy, you know, right? But, right? but then he didn't the even wait for the they, money, bro. <laughs> the way that they shot this chase sequence, which is all practical, and the lighting of it, it, it it's no, it makes how do I put this? It's no real way that this should have looked this good at night. Honestly, can I, can I please? Because Say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I said this once before, and I will say it again. Uh, right next to Roger Deakins, Greg Fraser Greg is my it. favorite Greg cinema, cinematographer. He's my favorite DP. I kid you not. There's a lot of them that are up there, but the, the way that this guy 
utilizes his camera work. Why do you think Rogue One is so beautiful? Right. Why do you think Dune is so beautiful? Right. Right? Why do you think those movies are so great? I mean, I have pictures behind uh, my wall right here of, like, some of my favorite shots in cinematography. And, like, most of them are <laughs> Greg Frazier's shots. <laughs> because that entire scene, um, you could, I mean, you could ask Shannon. Like, I was smiling like a kid at a... Because the camera work on the, the wheels, the back of the actual car, the chase sequence itself, all the rigging, everything... Man, ah, oh, it was such a beautiful scene. Well, well shot, well edited too. The editing was on was on a different level in this movie too. If you're if you this <sighs> editing is something that I I really care about in movies. And if it's super choppy and, and the choppiness doesn't play a role in the actual storytelling, it annoys me. Right, right. Like if it doesn't play, if you're watching a movie like, have you seen Unsane? Seen what? On the movie uh, on scene, the psychological thriller on scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Another great film. But there was a lot of weird chopping in that movie that was intentional, though, because right. the, the fact that it was, you know, in her, in this person's head, and you're constantly questioning is this reality? Is it not? Is this all made up? Is someone really chasing her? Et cetera. Right? So, unless it's for a purpose like that, editing, choppy editing bothers me. The way that this movie was edited, <laughs> it was, it, it worked so well it was so fluid the transitions were amazing and again that chase sequence the fire the practicality of that using real cars not like all of it the shading the co the, co the color contrast uh man everything everything about that on a technical level is just as editors mm, that's as a really a, good point you know there's what i mean one, there's one thing i wanted to talk about yeah bring, go for it so when the first time we actually really see Batman at the crime scene, your boy Matt and Greg decided we were gonna we're gonna film this from Batman's viewpoint. You know what I'm saying? Like he's walking <laughs> and everybody's looking at him. Looking at him, yeah. But that's yeah, never yeah. a shot that you have with Batman. Batman's always kind of in the shadows. He's never been like up in front in front of everybody. But instead, they're like up until a certain point, then you show and you pan, you show him fully realized. And that's crazy, bro. It's crazy because even to when they went to the Iceberg Lounge and they had Selena kind of going down and like so many different technical ways of them filming that and shooting that is it, all based on technique, lighting, progression, oh, pacing, can talk editing. about the lighting too? Like, Oh man, I'm telling you on a on a technical level, right? This film is a creative masterpiece. I literally kid you not. Like every little detail, lighting, right? The sound design. I was sound design is something I've been focusing a lot more to lately, uh, because I never really gave it a lot of credit until I found. I think I might have sent you a couple of videos on Instagram with this one. This uh this uh. uh sound designer that like makes his his you know records his own uh raw sounds and like makes a bunch of stuff for films mm -hmm. i might have sent it to you a while back but that made me realize like you know what man maybe i need to focus more on sound design because people put a lot of work into that it's true and sound design wise in this film every little piece of thing that was used in a lot of those sequences was just so beautiful especially with the car Right, leading up to the car chase, as you mentioned, with the engine going off. Man, I can't wait. Okay, I need to, I need to get your reaction when we see this in IMAX when you get a chance, because it it the the levels of the the only movie that ever had me this excited, especially when it comes to the natural lighting and filming, was probably The Shining. Mm. The cinematography from The Shining is probably the only thing that I could compare this to when it comes to the levels of excitement that I got. Mm. Um, because the shining, they use a, they use a lot of the flor uh, the fluorescent lighting in their shots. Mm -hmm. um, they use a lot of the natural sunlight. I read a whole uh, a whole uh, journal on that on that film, mm -hmm. just talking about the the the, uh, the DP stuff, right? right. So <laughs> this is gonna be up there for me. Like when like I gotta get the art like the art book soon. Movies like this, Dune, The Shining. Um, 
trying to think of anything recently that came up. I can't think of anything recently that came out besides the ones I just listed, uh, besides Dune, that had me this excited cinematography was. I don't know if you know anything that maybe could compare. Um, not as far as lighting, but the Revenant is always one that ah, ah. is mm, one mm, of the mm. most um I don't know, uh trans transformative ways of cinematography. Like it, it, they did some things with that I didn't think they could actually do from a scope standpoint and from a tight standpoint. Like, it was just uh astounding. And I, I mean yeah. I I've, I haven't seen it in years, but I, I'll never forget it. But one thing I'll say for you guys that are casual viewers that are watching this right now. There's never a moment in this film that you can't see or tell what's going on in the darkness unless they want you to. Mm, what I mean mm. by that is if they don't want you to see somebody in the darkness, you don't. But if if the front set is never, and you know, like you watch some movies, you're like, man, I can't tell what this is. Let me turn the brightness up on my, you know, the picture. Yeah. That's yeah. never the case with this film. Nope. Ever. With anybody. Even down to the real Like When they want you to see him and have him front and center, you, you will see him. him. You if you're not him. supposed to see him, you can't. And that's hard to do. That's very hard to do. No, that's true. No, that's true. Because, I mean, you, you bring up a good point. There are some movies that have, you know, improper lighting. Um, whether it was an artistic choice or not, um, I, I would say it wasn't. Because, like, in this case, as you mentioned, there were a lot of dark scenes that wasn't supposed to be shown. And if you didn't need to see it, you wouldn't see it, no matter what you do. Right. Um, that's That's proper lighting. That's proper uh, setup. That's proper uh, uh, shot lists and everything with your cinematographers. That's and, and your, your your grippers. Everybody. That's proper coordination. Um, there's certain movies that you, you <laughs> that are not. The lighting is not the best. And like you said, there'll be scenes that are a little too dark. You might go into your TV settings. You might turn it up. You know. Oh, I, I was supposed to see that guy back there. Right. But then when you play it on another monitor. It's like okay, maybe I don't see this guy. Or I played on this monitor, and you know, you, you start. I'm I'm kind of technical about that myself. I will literally not watch him. <laughs> I, I have this this projector this projector that I'm watching that I do most of my reactions on now, and my my screeners and stuff for reviews. I'm very particular about the detail and the type of screens and the color gamut and all of that stuff that I'm watching things on because I'm very like picky about that. Mm -hmm. for the little little technical stuff but in this film i'm not gonna have that problem right <laughs> like at all right. usually right. most things that i watch i have to recalibrate it to certain settings to fit my viewing experience i'm not gonna have to do that for this film at all just because i'm a little nitpicky but yeah no i mean the I'm technical gonna... yeah go ahead sorry i was gonna ask you a question yeah because it's an off-putting question but it's, it's i think it's a real one because lucas uh made a blanket statement that this is this is the best Batman narrative film you're gonna get, but uh, this film is one that's possibly nobody's gonna talk about after a few months when a certain Marvel film comes out. Yep. Now this is my thing, my question to you: Do you feel like this movie isn't for everybody? And can you expound on that? What I mean by that is like because this is a superhero noir <laughs> thriller. And most kids, I mean, even though it's PG-13, most kids really probably shouldn't see this movie. Yeah. Um, and it's not, I'm not going to say it's not enjoyable, but it's not, it's very bleak. Like the undertones and the seriousness of the psychology of Batman is very sad. It's very dark. Um, and I'm not just saying dark because it's gritty, but like literally there's a darkness that shrouds Gotham. Gotham in and of itself is like its own character in this film. Mm -hmm. So would you say this movie is for everybody or is there some people that are kind of like, eh, this ain't for me. Like I need a little bit something, a little bit more. I mean, to me, my thing is like, if you, if, if this is raw Batman, you don't, maybe you didn't know Batman, <laughs> but I'm asking you from, from the perspective of looking out, you know, cause I know how you feel about it. Yeah, um, be, objectively speaking, man, I don't think. I think it it comes down to a genre thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't say it's for everybody because no movie is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Everything is genre genre spe you know specific. Like, Encanto is a wonderful film. It's a beautiful film, musically, visually, acting wise, story wise. It's an amazing film to me, but it's genre wise. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Right. Not everybody loves animation. Not everybody loves musical musicals or musical esque type films. 
Um, some people prefer, you know, uh, you know, the Martin Scorsese, you know, gangster flicks, right? right? Like there's very, you know, specific types of films cater to very specific types of people. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely not, to answer your question more directly, um, this is not in comparison to like Zack Snyder's Justice League where you don't need to really know anything about these characters. You can throw somebody, anybody can just sit down and watch the movie and find something to enjoy from it because it has the action that's needed to entertain people, stimulate them. There's enough, um, uh, me, the music is it's entertaining enough to keep people engaged. Um, and the acting is all right. And it's good enough to keep people who are not really like that into entertained. I can't right. say that's the case for the Batman. Right. Because you need to be, you, you have to come in with one of two perspectives. One, yeah. or oh, one of a couple expect, uh, perspectives. But one is like this, okay. Am I okay with seeing a more film noir style type movie? Am I okay with that genre? Right. Right. Does that genre is that genre okay to me? Do I like detective uh, content? Do I like right. like the psychological, uh, partially psychological thrillers? Right. Um, do I like gritty and darkness? And does how does that affect me emotionally? Right. Right. So if you if you cannot see yourself being okay with any of those things, then you're not going to like the movie. And that's just that's just my my honest thoughts on that. Compared to like Doctor Strange or any MCU film, they're catered because Disney Disney knows how to make this right here. They know how to make this. So even if you hate the MCU, you, you you're gonna find an MCU movie that's gonna interest you somewhat because they make films to a broader audience, right? right. On so many interest levels, right? So yeah. um. So yeah, that that's a that's just kind of where I'm thinking. I don't think anybody can really. But then again, there's my cousin and her husband who she never knew anything about the Batman or or Batman in general. She's not really a DC person, but she watched it and she liked it. So I feel right. like you need to have some of those other things, again, genre specific kind of things that you are into. Right. And if you're naturally into them, then I feel like you'll you'll easily be able to make this a good watch. Yeah, the reason why I asked that question is because I, I did, I was thinking about Marvel. I know that Doctor Strange is coming up. I know mm -hmm. that, you know, heck, even The Flash, you know, is coming up. But the thing about Marvel is that all their films, it's just catered to everybody. Like, they don't take certain chances because they yeah. want to hit the general audience as a whole. It's not niche, you know. But the thing about this film, and I don't care who you are, you cannot tell me this is a bad film. You could say oh. it's okay. You could say it's not for me. You could say it's good or great or you loved it. But nobody, unless you're really deceiving yourself and you sipping some tea that ain't they ain't should be sipping, this is not in any way, shape, or form considered a bad film. You can start no. comparing, you know, and you know, asking here or there because you have what you want. Like some people are like, man, I want that Nolan vibe. Oh man, I want that, you know, Burton vibe. Oh man, I want, you know, the animated series come to life, which is what you get right here. I want that but, Snyder, I want that Snyder vibe. I want that Snyder verse. A lot of yeah. people, though, again, were hurt that the fact that Ben Affleck's film didn't get made. And I know some fans out there are like, man, boycott this movie because Ben Affleck should have had his chance first. This is the thing I'm gonna say to all you guys. That's not here, here, no, that's not here, no, there. <laughs> Hear it very carefully. This is a black DC black label film, much like the Joker. The difference is with these black label films, they're making them into their own trilogies. They're making them into their own Elsmore universes. Mm -hmm. If you want to continue to watch what you know, you a brand kind of lesser dark, the DCU is still making very good different films. But these DC black label are gonna continue to be made, so it means that. Other people are like, oh, wow, I want to see a more serious version of Batman. This is what you get. But mm -hmm. you cannot say that this movie is bad. I don't care who you are. I, I want somebody to really prove that to me no, straight it's, up. It, it's, not a, it, it's, not a, it's not a bad film at all. You, like, just, just fundamentally speaking, as a movie, take Batman out of it. Take what you know or don't know about the Batman out of the equation. Um, on so many different technical levels, this film is, is great. Right. This one was, is a properly well made film. One of the things that because I I talked about this uh, recently too. At least for me, this is how I how I approach like the difference between a critic's perspective and a fan perspective. 
And this is why I, depending on what I'm watching, I view one opinion more than the other, depending on what's going on. Um, my thing is this, right? As you know, Sam, um, you know, being, being a critic, voting for awards and stuff, you know this. There'll be things that you, that are, you know, are sequels to things, right? And you still have to watch it. Like it could be in the in the in the editing category, and for example, uh, for the the spirit the upcoming spirit awards, um, for the voting for me when I have to vote, it was like this. One of the, some of the stuff I can't uh, name yet because they didn't announce it yet, but some of the uh, the films were in a very you know the editing category, mm-hmm. and regardless if I've seen the sequel, I mean the uh, sorry the uh, the the one before it or the episode before it or the season before it, I'm only there to see if this was a well-edited uh, episode or a well-edited film. Right. That's it. And, it, it that, uh, you know, that stuff doesn't necessarily matter all the time. And then, and then you also have the perspective of, okay, what can this film do? Does this film tell a good, a, a, an interesting enough story? Mm-hmm. Does it make its point across, right? Is the acting good? Is the writing fluid, right? Does the music help the film? This is the different technical levels. So if you put aside the Batman esque things that you know where our fan side comes out we're like oh man i really love this is the batman and you look at batman from those technical levels it is a great film right and i don't see how anybody can really say that it's not and i agree with you i don't really see how people can say that it's, it's not really good a good film because it, it's that's just not the case it's right. it's it's leaps and bounds better than most movies that you you know that has recently come out and i'll just be, be really honest with you so so, so I guess my last question I was going to ask you is that where do they go from here? We already know that they're going to be making spinoffs for, I guess, presumably the GCPD has been turned into like an Arkham style show, which is kind of like, I think he equated it to like a horror movie, which is crazy. Uh, Penguin's going to get his own spinoff. I think it was rumored that Catwoman might get her own spinoff, which is weird. Yeah, but it, it allows more time for them to kind of float, much like what they're doing with Doom, um, to be able to make the progressive story. I think Matt needs to get a little bit more time to take his time to write it but the question i really have for you is that in terms of where do they go next do they go fantastical like with the a villain like mr freeze Mm. or do they do something still in this type of genre in like the court of owls because that's very grounded and that's the bottom level of corruption it's like it's say hypothetically speaking we do get bruce wayne finally realize that he's the public figure and now he's being inducted to this organization he never knew about. You know what I'm saying? And it just happens to be the Court of Owls. And you happen to find out some things that, were, that really happened. I think that that was played to the genre the same. But, you know, what would the fans want? The fans, I've heard more people talk about Mr. Freeze than anybody. You know what I'm saying? So I'm curious from your perspective, what do they do next? What is that fine line that Matt needs to take this down? Um, I think what's important, in my opinion, is who's behind it, and Matt's behind it, right? Matt was able to take a character that was perceived as goofy or not so serious, like the Riddler, mm-hmm. and make him a genuine threat, and make him ground level. Because like I said, most of the iterations I've seen for the Riddler has been like, I couldn't really take him seriously as a, as a villain, besides his intellect, and besides how he handles situations... I couldn't really take the Riddler that serious, right? In comparison to like, you know, the Penguin or Joker or any anybody else really in in his rogues gallery, right? So I feel they, if Matt Reeves is behind this and given the right amount of time, you can you can make Mister Freeze be grounded as well. You can make a, a, a and not be too flashy while still having those elements that make Mister Freeze who he is. I think you can. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. it. Just depends on how they handle things tonally, um, and it just really, honestly, just the care. I think if I'm really thinking of it, just the care and, and who's behind it is what is what will really make the difference. Because let's be real, if Zack Snyder was was to make the Riddler, it would not be the same mm-hmm. as what we got from Matt Reeves. Okay. Um, even with the Joker, and we'll see how that plays out because he left that he left that open ended when he was speaking to IGN. He, he he did an interview when he said that uh, you know, they had another scene. I don't know how many guys seen that interview, but he said there was actually That's another right. scene. Yeah, that that they took out from the movie where he was interviewing the Joker. 
-hmm. and um, earlier on, and they took that out, but they they left that open ended um, because they can go anywhere. So I mean, I feel like you can take Mister Freeze and make him a serious villain, and still keep it grounded, and make it make it just as good, if not better, than this one. Yeah, I just feel like you need the time and the care. Yeah, because even with that uh, small interview, they kind of was like, I think Matt's approach to it was that this version of the Joker that he kind of conceptualized was mm. like a serial killer. And he's got like a deformity that yep, yep. like he couldn't he couldn't lower his smile at all. And that messed with him psychologically because he hadn't he's not completely the Joker just yet. Um, Barry is an amazing actor. If you hadn't seen the killing of a sacred deer, Barry Keon. you you will be impressed by this man. But I think that Matt said that the only reason why he even had him left in at all, because he was gonna remove him completely, is he wanted to showcase that Batman, yeah, he had an option. He could have went the route with Catwoman and left out. That makes conscious sense. But there's still impending doom. There's still problems that are gonna continue to arise it he's got to be responsible for. And so leaving somebody like the Joker or somebody else could have done that the same way. I think what would be a really interesting approach to me is possibly like uh, a Harvey Dent situation uh, because mm. they're going to have to redevelop like legislation, like like the government itself of how Gotham is being operated is going to have to be changed. And so I think having a Harvey Dent situation would make the most sense with maybe a Court of Owls mixed to it. Um, but I personally, I mean, if I'm being all the way honest, like I want to see a Mr. Freeze, I would love to see a yeah. Clayface. I, 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 I mean, just do it up. But I think you're right. I think Matt, and if you give him the time and you allow him to push it, I think it's going to be fine. My concern yeah. is more so Warner Brothers wanted to make money and making sure it's not a, a niche thing because it did make, I think, like 134 million. It's two, um, it's two eighty five or near three hundred worldwide uh, right worldwide. now. Right. So it it's, it already made it already made the money it spent on the movie back. Now it's got now it has to make a profit. Right. Exactly. So, so I think they'll be fine. But um, to be honest, especially since we didn't have uh, money wise, like this is not like No Way Home where this was a big lead up for several films and you bring back two big, uh, you know, characters from like other you know bigger trilogies, right? Like. It's not like that situation. Like this is a, a one off Batman thing. And right. for them to make, you know, three hundred mil worldwide uh during the endemic right now, um, it's pretty impressive to me. And I think they'll be fine money wise. Um, they know they have other movies coming out this year. Um, you know, we got Aquaman, we got Flash, we got the um what else? Isn't there another DC movie coming out this year? Uh, is Black Adam coming Black, out this Black, year. Black Adam, Black Adam, Aquaman, The Flash, The Flash, and then it was the Batman. Yeah, those. And then we get, and we got the, we got the Batgirl movie coming out soon on HBO Max. Yeah, is that coming out this year or is that coming out next year? I do not know actually, because because this is the yeah. weird thing. I didn't think about it, but in November, uh, the Black Panther comes out. <laughs> December, Avatar two. Oh comes shoot, out. Black Panther's coming out this year. Doctor Strange 2 comes out this year and something else really big. Uh I can't think of. But yeah, yeah, it's it's not stacked. what Mor- what Morbius? <laughs> you know? Uh, Morbius is Morbius is next month. Is it like, Morbius is uh, next month? I don't even know. Um yeah, but Morbius yeah. is April, I think, unless they unless they move it again. <laughs> uh yeah, April the first. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man. It's an exciting time. I know we're, but... uh, I know we're we got we're pressed for time. We got to close up soon. Um, but I mean, okay. Do you? Uh, no, I don't think we have. We actually don't even have time to go through through questions right now because there was some that I saw. But uh, oh yeah, Avatar two is dropping this year too. By the way, that's another thing. Yep, that's it's a stack. Good. It's a stack year for movies. Um. Your your final thoughts, I would say your final take and final thoughts on uh Bat uh sorry, Batgirl's Christmas. Sheesh. Oh yeah, Moon Knights this month too. Oh my lord. Yeah, we getting blessed. We getting blessed this year. We're gonna be busy for sure. Oh yeah, yeah very, very busy. Um now, but yeah, your final thoughts and 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 on the Batman and everything like that. I, so the Batman is a 10 out of 10 film, bro. 
And, and sidebar, sorry, right. I gotta I gotta tell my Jakina story, but I tell you. Batman is a 10 out of 10 film. I've only seen the movie once. I've seen it now what three or four weeks ago. And any movie, because I've 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 gone to movies, I'm like, man, I gotta go see that again. You know, I need to just for the review sake, I need to be able to remember what I saw. I will never forget the first impression of this film. And I think that if you're going into this film. You know, because I could talk about how much I love it, but just for you guys that are watching, if you go into this film and you didn't know what it was, you know, just realize it is a very noir, noir esque, meaning that he's narrating, he's the detective, he's trying to understand and comprehend, he's trying to stop the killings, he's trying to get ahead of it. Then he's being also compromised emotionally, but he's still also being grounded as a real Batman character that we've never seen on a live action forum. It's, it's, it's on every level exceeded my expectations. Um, the only thing which would have been really triggering is to see what is the rankings of the Batman films. Um, right now, this movie is tied with my number one Batman film, but I'm not going to say what that is. I'll, I'll let Matt tell me his list. Um, but, dude, like this. I'm is- doing, I'm going to do a letterbox. I'm going to do a letterbox. I'm still trying to digest. This, this is easily one of the best films I've seen. In a very long time. And as a Batman fan, this movie was, I think I put it on Twitter, this is my Batman dream. Honestly. That's what it is. Straight up. So, just to echo this, uh, Rain. In the rain. Wrong, fit, wrong movie. Wrong, wrong movie. Um, Greg Fraser. I, 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 look, I've been saying this. Nobody ain't wanna believe me, bro. I, I, I look. I've been, I've been hyping up Greg Fraser since before Dune came out. Since Rogue One, I've been hyping up this man. Ain't nobody wanna believe me until they saw the Batman. <laughs> like I've been saying this since day one. This man is somebody you gotta be on the lookout for. He is changing the game. He knows what he's doing with his shots. And the only other person right now that's a legend in the game. I mean, there's plenty of other like uh, cinematographers. I mean, I can't say too much about the Adam project, but that was pretty, that was pretty dope too. But like, there's other cinematographers out there. That's like uh, really up there. You know, Roger Deakins being one of my guys, but man, right there. Roger Deakins being like the, man. the, you know what I mean? The goat. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the man. Like if I met that's that man the, in real life, I legit would be like, "That is the goat. That is the goat." <laughs> I gotta, um, Sam. I gotta tell you uh, when we when we when we end the stream. I gotta. T- I, I never told you what happened with the whole thing with Michael Giacchino. Oh yeah, I, I was just saying this, guys. I, I was I was I was like weirdly enough at this at this screening for the second screen for the Batman uh, before they released it. Um, they had some pretty high profile people in there, mm-hmm. and I look over, and it's Michael Giacchino <laughs> freaking sitting next to me. So, but that's a story I can't really <laughs> talk about on street right now. But, um, uh, that, that's a whole thing, that's a whole thing, but anyways, but yeah, it's um, a separate video, you guys. Wait that's a separate, it. that's a separate video. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, my thoughts to wrap up the stream on the Batman, just to echo off of everything that uh, Sam was saying, was um top tier top top of the top best of the best i you know had high expectations even you know the journey from like from dc fandom even slight like even before that when they started releasing the teaser and uh and also someone mentioned the um the score oh man oh man there's stuff i wanted to talk about with the score we don't have time now crap um <laughs> Somebody talks about it being very uh, the motif sounding a lot like uh, like like the like a uh, Imperial March, mm-hmm. and but not only did it sound like Imperial March, <laughs> Batman had Imperial March moments because in Imperial March, when Darth, anytime Vader stepped in the scene, dum 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 dum, dum like every scene that Vader was in, <laughs> the theme was playing. It was the same scene. It was the same thing with the Batman. Every scene he was in, his theme was, was full swing in the back. Um, but the thing that I loved about it, uh, that too, when he got me talking, man, um, I love Giacchino's rendition for Riddler for uh, for Ava Maria. 
mm. being his actual theme song. Yeah. I don't know how many people caught that, but the first time I heard it, I'm like, yo, this sounds like Ava Maria, but in minor scale. Mm. And lo and behold, Ava Maria, minor scale. And it was, anyways, great film, great music, great cinematography. And and Robert Pattinson killed it. And his his Batman voice was so natural sounding. It wasn't like this forceful, gritty, like weirdness. It was like when he, I love the way that uh, Robert describes it. Like when he puts on the cowl, it just comes out. Like it just happens. And yeah, man, even the way he walked, he had, he gave me Michael Myers energy. Every time he stepped in a scene, his posture was up. He was just walking with his hands to his side. And it was so creepy the way that he was walking out of the shadows from certain scenes, man. Oh man, it was great. So yeah, I mean, that, that's just my, Sam pretty much summed it up the best way. Um, but that's just my general thoughts. I mean, I've, I've been talking about the Batman for 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 <laughs> for weeks now. I can't stop talking about it. Um, I feel like my only posts have been the Batman lately. Uh, <laughs> it's just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, look, I can shake this whole thing out right now and like probably rile the whole chat up. I mean, like, y'all think that there should be some Oscar contention for this movie? Yes. But did I say that? No. <laughs> say that. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, hands down, everything. Because what I remember, one of the things I told you, Sam, going into this was like, uh, when, when the when the question came up about the score, one of the first things I said was like, okay, this is a movie you have to see first to see why the score works. I agree. Listening to it without watching the movie, it's gonna feel weird. It's going to be like, this doesn't feel like the high energy that Hans Zimmer brought to the table or even with uh, Danny Elfman and his iconic mm-hmm. theme. Like, it, it's not going to feel like that, right? But then when you watch the movie and you see the scenes, yeah. Can we talk about Catwoman's kicks? Her kicks were amazing, man. Like, she was literally just sweeping people left and right with her kicks. It was her That fight, that little brief fight scene with, with, with Batman was amazing. And the chemistry was on a whole different level. We're gonna wrap up this live stream, bro. There's a lot to talk about. In this we could have just we could have just came back. You could just tell them we'll come back for another one. Well, yeah, we can, we can we can come back for another one. If y'all want to see if y'all want a part two, <laughs> hit how many likes they need to give. I mean, like... I mean let me see how many likes does the stream have? Actually, <laughs> I don't even know. I'm not even I don't even have the stream pulled up. I'm only, I only have stream yard pulled up. Uh the stream has the stream has 21, the stream has 21 likes. If we can get if we can get maybe thirty to forty likes, then we'll do another we'll do another yeah we'll do another one yeah thirty or forty likes you guys I will come back and I'll bring reinforcements bring me yeah bring me, yeah more more bigger uh, more bigger conversation anyone with pops in your background I can't take serious nice <laughs> what the awesome heck? wait hold on hold on I gotta do this give me a second. <laughs> Apparently, I can't be taken serious because I got popped in the back. <laughs> oh, that's like the most funniest comment I've read in a minute. <laughs> Do you want to take me serious, dog? Because I promise you can't find this pop, dog. This going to pay for my children's education, dog. Bro, just so you I know. Can... <laughs> It's oh right God. behind me. <laughs> anyway, I'm just playing. It's all good. Hey, I don't care. I could care. Nah, about. it don't matter to me. That's just a funny, a very funny comment. Um, this cover, by the way, just had Ooh. to, sh- I just had to show that real quick. Ooh. All right, Batman, black and white. Make sure you read it. The whole comics in black and white. Okay, <laughs> perfect accessory for uh for the Batman film noir stuff. But anyway, yeah. But yeah. Um, right. we're on Twitter. Uh, wait, what is my Twitter? Oh, <laughs> what, is your t- <laughs> what is your Twitter? <laughs> my Twitter is super SEO. Oh, crap. I can't talk in this thing. Hold on. Let's see if I can type in the chat. Yeah, we had 27 mm-hmm. likes. So I'm just there. Okay. Appreciate y'all. I'm just like, come back. Come <laughs> back. Yeah, we be, we be having these kind of random conversations like this all the time. So, yeah, all man. Right. There's my Twitter right there. And then here's our Team JBS Twitter as well, I think. I think this is right. Yep. All right, guys. My Twitter is the same. Sam, thank you so much for coming, chatting 
on this impromptu live stream. I appreciate everyone that's here. I got to make a thumbnail for this stream and post it later. There's no, there's no thumbnail for this. Um, <laughs> I didn't even make a thumbnail yet. I got to make one after uh, when it gets re-uploaded. But yeah, for those who came in later, uh, this will be on the replay if you want to see the beginning of our conversation. Uh, concerning the Batman, you'll see uh, you'll see Sam's Sam's beautiful face giving the introduction um, <laughs> to the whole stream because I wasn't there for a little bit. But after that, you'll see the rest of the rest of the conversation. But yeah, um, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Sam, and I appreciate all of you guys who are always watching the videos, leaving comments, and some of you guys who I have not seen in the chat before until today. It was a pleasure talking with you guys, and don't forget to check out uh, Sam's channel at Team JVS. Make sure you go ahead and do that. They have some more conversations with the Batman, with him and his crew. So make sure to go over there, check out further discussion. Is that four hour, is that four, four hour conversation? So we had a four hour spoiler discussion last night. And then the night before, we had a two hour and 35 minute just rant. It was just a rant. Like all we were doing just literally like, yo, this was awesome. Yo, this was awesome. So yeah, I've, I've talked about this movie more than I've... I've talked about this movie probably the equivalent of seeing it four times. <laughs> I talked point. about this movie then then uh, more than No Way Home actually. Yeah, <laughs> I talked about that movie a lot. True. Um. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it. Appreciate y'all. See you peace, later. People. Love, peace, and hair grease. Deuces.